Hello and welcome back to Much Do About Rugby. Today we are going to be chatting about the Lions and the squad selection. Oh my days, <laughs> what a day it has been. We are going to be running through all the positions, kind of one by one, going through maybe some big omissions and some big inclusions. So without further ado, let's get into it. So beginning with probably a couple of surprises in this position. Front row, let's start with the hookers to begin with. We had Luke Cowan, Dickie, Jamie George and Ken Owens in the hookers. Fellas, what do we think of that selection? That wasn't that wasn't that what we predicted. I think that was what everyone predicted. I did want um Kelleher in there, but was he really gonna make it? Yeah, I um, think that was I think Hooker is one position where pretty much as expected. <laughs> one yeah. of the only positions that hasn't caused some controversy. Uh but yeah, as expected from us, I think that that's pretty much what we what we thought. It'll be interesting to see who starts. Uh, I think it'll be between Jamie George and um Ken Owens, but yeah, it'll be interesting. Really? You think between Jamie George and Ken Owens, you don't think Luke Cowan Dickey's in with a shout? No, I don't, I don't personally think so, but... Um... Let's just put it this way. It's between those three. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Brilliant. Okay. Right. <laughs> so that's not really causing us much trouble. Um, we have some props on the other hand. We have Xander Fagerson from Scotland, Tad Furlong, Wynne Jones, Andrew Porter, Rory Sutherland, and Mako Vunapola. Now, when I saw the the props, there was one person that struck me as being omitted. That was Carl Sinclair. Anyone else that you thought, um, you know, Carl Sinclair obviously went on the previous tour, has low-key torn it up for England a little bit, especially during the World Cup, had maybe his best run of games, and scored like a pretty good try against Australia as well, just to top that all off. But I don't know. Who, who, what do you guys think about the prop situation? Hmm. I know. We hasn't Singh, sorry, go on. Has, hasn't Singh been like one of our best players like the last couple of seasons? It's kind of ridiculous how he's been um, omitted. Well, I, I think you say that. I, I, we, when we were speaking through the team, I, I think I actually originally mentioned him as a possible starter, interestingly, uh, to which he hasn't made the squad. But I remember you guys saying that you don't think he's he's necessarily reached the heights that he did during the World Cup where he was actually tearing up. Um, well, it's going, to be, it's going to be Furlong starting, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even so, I think... Wait, who's the other tight head? The other tight heads are um, Porter, Porter and... Either suddenly not Porter is him. Porter's so rogue. I really did not think he was going to make it. That's like... I don't know. I, I just would pick... I would just pick Carl Singler over Porter any day. Yeah, I, I mean, Porter's the thing is, like, once you reach the third or fourth choice, unless injuries, he's unlikely to like start or even probably bench on a test. So, yeah, that is one thing that I actually did notice with the uh, whole because they have the midweek side. I think they have to, he has to think of a side that's going to be able to be like these club tiers. It is just like, it's not the same thinking as just like someone who could sub in for the, uh, the starting test team. Yeah, but, but the, what they predominantly do is the, the, the club sides are before the test and then they'll have one club team between one of the tests. So mm. I feel like even so, they I think they they use those like warm-up games to really test out people. Like, for example, one time they had like Stuart Hoggett play at 10 in one of those warm-up games. Really? Um, yeah, and he actually tore it up. I think the score was something like, like 50 nil Australia, or something. He ran it in from like 50. Uh, well, yeah, the yeah. Score against the Reds or something, he ran it in from 50. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, Stuart Hogg, 10 for the Lions. Never <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just another... another... What's, what's next? Uh, no, I was just going to say, I, I like Xander Fagerson. I, honestly, I really like the look of, of this whole Lions squad in general. Um, I know Max and Maliki, maybe you guys think that there's a, f- a few errors or something, but I'm generally thinking that I, I like all of the selections. I can see exactly what he's going for, especially like someone like Xander Fagerson, who's actually played really, really well for Scotland recently, despite getting one you know red card, which is a bit like, dodgy but it's one one little error and then otherwise you know pretty pretty good run of form in the six nations yeah um so i think people like him and rory sutherland who again we've mentioned before on the podcast as someone who was basically meant to be like insane and we haven't really seen much of but to now be able to see him on a mm. lions tour i'm excited to watch him again uh seriously good selection for me but 
Yeah, anyway, moving on swiftly to our second row, Lions 2021 against South Africa, second row selections. So we have Tag Burn, he was included as a second row, Ian Henderson, uh, Johnny Hill, bit of a bolter, Maro Itoje, uh, obvious, obvious choice really, Alan Wynne Jones, who's also the captain of the tour, and Courtney Laws, bit of a shock inclusion there. What do you guys make of it? Yeah, I'm uh, Courtney this, Laws. I think the second row is is one position where I think I, I'm slightly confused by a couple of the selections, and I think some could be changed. The main ones being, I think I, I feel very sorry for James Ryan in particular, which is clear. Oh that, my god, like, I actually didn't even realize he didn't get picked. What the yeah, hell? Ian Henderson is is clearly well. I assume been picked over him, as is Johnny Hill. Um, Courtney Laws, I think it's key. It's quite clear that he's there for versatility. Like he can play and across the back row as well. And that's something. And the whole and the whole continuity thing. Like I think Gal Gat- Gat- yeah. was talking about that. I think it's a big. So there's definitely going to be players who you can tell within the squad. There are players who are like obviously not at their prime. They're not maybe not even starting for their country, but they're just solid players. Like Courtney Laws, he's just going to smash people, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I kind of feel sorry for him as well. Uh, for um, Johnny Gray as well, who also missed out. Who I thought had a really great Six Nations and probably deserves a spot over Johnny Hill, who personally, in my opinion, was pretty unimpressive over Six Nations and thought he played quite badly in some games. What, 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 what could sure be thinking that. for Johnny Hill? I, I just don't. I completely agree with you. I can't see why he like he had. Yeah, he, last season he had a really good year, but I just can't. See, like, I think James, I think Ryan, main... James Ryan was literally meant to be the starter for literally like yeah. three seasons. Well, he was, then he yeah, he was, season. People were saying he was going to be the, the captain, he hasn't even made the squad. I think the thoughts behind uh Johnny Hill would be like he's a, he's a physical player, basically. And I feel like I think he said it in his pre spiel before the squad about how like he's gone for like a physical squad, basically. Mm-hmm. And Johnny Hill fits that, like, he's a big physical player. Um, and I guess that's what he's going for. Even so, I just I don't I don't see what James Ryan doesn't have. I think I James like, Ryan's mate, he's just not informed. That's literally he's just not informed. That's all. I like that's literally it. It. I like I like Johnny Hill. I like Johnny Hill. Um, I think he's proven himself at club level enough, as we'll come on to see. It, it doesn't necessarily matter overall how you perform internationally. Club form does matter as well. And let's face it, Johnny Hill is probably the best second row in the Premiership at the moment. I would say. I um, definitely don't think he is. Oh, okay. what in the Premiership? Mm. Give me a couple of, give me a couple of second rows. He was going to say about he, <laughs> scores tri- <laughs> he scores try for he scores tries for fun. He uh, he's absolutely huge. He's part of a double winning Exeter side. I think there's like multiple reasons to have him in there. And I don't think we have got to look at the negatives like James Ryan wasn't in. I think we just got to look at the positives now. Look, the squad's been been selected. I'm going to look at the positives about why that person's been selected. Oh yeah, so, but I mean, we're we're talking about it to point spiral, out the negatives as well. A spiral, kick, a spiral kick from your own 22, a second row, get it on on the opposition 22. That's 50 meters down the pitch. Can you really beat that raw it's, talent it's, in the second it's row? It's not what a second row is for. <laughs> it anyway, I, I, he did it yeah. anyway. Is a sec- is I just a think meant to pass, no, but Sinclair, Mako, they all do that anyway, and everyone goes like, "Wow, a prop pass." No, no, well, I think that's <laughs> different because that's like the changing role of a, of a front row, but it's never yeah, going to be a role of a second row to that's sling. Yeah, mate, this is the, mate the evolving role of a second row. There's a kick. They'll be kicking. <laughs> mate, John Eels, John Drop goals in fifty meters. Yeah, that's I'm like, just saying. I think some of the selections in the second row, a lot of people have been harshly. Done by including Johnny Gray and James Ryan, who have both been pretty exceptional. I think. I think. They, I think up until this year, they were contenders for that. For that. For that. They were definitely like the fit, one of the, they, those. It was like obviously Johnny Gray, James Ryan, Maratoja, and Alan Moon Jones were known as like the four best second rows until this season. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I, I, yeah, I, I, I like the second rows though. I, you don't have that. to back every single decision, like Ed, just, now do. it's been I done. Do. I'm a Lions fan, I'm a Lions fan, man. So what? I, you criticize the Eng- Ed, you criticize the England setup and selection. <laughs> you can criticize this is Lions bigger well. than this is bigger than all of that. Bigger. This is the Lions. This is the pinnacle. 
I'm watching the gas documentaries on Sky Sports earlier. I was <laughs> gone. That's why um, I'm so gas. Anyway, anyway, the second row is good. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They've got plenty of strength, plenty of power, and uh, enough to to basically run over a few South Africans. Hopefully, you know, Courtney Laws is big. He's a big guy. Not exactly going to go backwards, is he? he? Rarely goes backwards. Um, right back row. Now this was a very contentious. Um, position for selectors I, I can imagine and this is probably I think they the Warren Gatler was mentioning this is why he had to include another man and uh, get that approval for that 37th uh, squad member so we have Tom Curry pretty obvious selection been on top form for ages now one of the best bankers in the world Valatau same again really Lions experience fantastic player Sam Simmons Bolter Low key, we'll talk about him. We'll talk about him in a minute. Justin Tipperick again, massive experience, good player, and Hamish Watson. Uh, also, one final player who I did not see coming, and literally, oh, I, was, yeah. I actually spoke out loud to myself. I was like, "What the hell?" And I was like, <laughs> Jack Conan, what is who? going on there? Who? Alecky, tell me what's going on. Mate, Jack Cohen, what the hell? I don't, I, I was, I wasn't expecting that. Like, was it? I don't know. What has he, has he been really good for Ireland and Leinster or something? I don't know. But I think it was, who is it? Is it Steve Tandy? He's like the, the coach at Leinster. He must like, what someone the coaches must absolutely love Jack Conan or something for him to be in the squad and must have just persuaded them that he is just some unreal beast who's going to like tear it up this season. And he will, maybe. But um, yeah. Sam Simmons, that that actually made as you as you were like with Jack Cohen and you said I was literally like what like to uh, Sam Simmons. I I genuinely did not think he was going to get picked. Like I knew that was like kind of like joke. Like everyone was like Sam Simmons for Lions would be hilarious because then Billy won't get picked and they were like rub it in um, what's his name Eddie Jones' face. But then it actually happened. So it's kind of kind of mental, isn't it? Mm, I agree. I mean, I I personally I think the back row selection. In a whole, I think he's got it. Like I think, like we look at the back row, pretty incredible, isn't it? Like, I would just love CJ Stander in there. That's the one yeah, player. Who I, I, I think realistically, that... it's going to be Curry, Tipperick, and uh, Falatau starting. I hope, mm. which I think was our predicted starting back row. Uh, I'd love to see Sam Sims coming off the bench, but I mean, notable people missing out there are, as you say, Stander, um, Underhill as well, and Billy Vinopola. I think of the three main that have missed out, to be perfectly honest with you. Not surprised whatsoever about Vinopola missing out. He hasn't been in his best form, albeit playing some slightly better games in the Six Nations. And Underhill, since coming back from... Uh, yes, he he, mate, he outplayed Falasau in the Wales games. So don't shake your head. Um, and then Underhill in the, as well. <laughs> he's just come back from injury and he's actually not been playing amazingly well for Bath compared to some of these other players that have, that have been given a nod ahead of him. So... I'm fairly comfortable with a back row choice, but I'm not ecstatic. I think the starting three will be really good, though. Well, the thing is about the back row, in my opinion, is that it was always going to be strong, no matter who they picked. Uh, I guess that's the whole point of the Lions. Like, it's always going to be strong. There's not really going to be a position where you go like, oh, actually, we don't really have much there. So... I don't know. I, I haven't. I, I haven't really seen much of Conan, but he just, from what I have seen playing for Leinster and, and Ireland, is that he's just quite solid. Like, doesn't necessarily make many mistakes. Like, he's kind of under the radar, but also on the radar. In a he's way. a he's a bolter, isn't he? Yeah, he's he a can, bolter. Like, realistically, say. we're not going to see him playing a load of Test match minutes. So, like, it's these. I, I, I don't think. <laughs> oh, let's cut. I mean, do you guys think? I, I don't imagine. No imagine idea, mate. Imagine, imagine the scenes. Jack Conan, Sam Simmons, Stein, and the the. <laughs> it could happen, you know. Who saw Ben Teo a going on the last Lions tour and b starting the first Test against New Zealand? Like these things do happen. It's not. Yeah. It's a rarity. Yeah. I, I, would I could say. see them even starting starting Hamish Watson as well because that guy's an animal. Um, yeah, I'm pleased good. he made the squad. I'm pleased he is in the squad because you guys were very like anti him when we were doing our team. <laughs> You'd like just sort of part him off. Um, so I'm pleased he's made it because he 100% deserves it. Yeah, he's a good player. I just don't. I, I again, I think like like you think about Conan that I just don't think 
unless he absolutely destroys like what the was warm up games, he won't he won't necessarily like compared Mate, compare him to the like, best player of the entire six nations. <laughs> compare compare he's literally the best player. No, but compared to like the composure of Falatau, Tipperick, and then like just Curry, I, I would say is just a more rounded player rather than just a wrecking ball. And that doesn't mean that Hamish Watson is a really like, bad player. I think he's a really good player. But I just think you need that like test match Lions experience, I guess. And especially yeah. he's Scottish. So like, mate, do you not want to see. You know, he's a lion now, though. He's you don't not want to see Hamish Watson, absolutely bumber club, Steph de Toyd. Yeah, that would, be <laughs> that would be good. If he does that, I'll actually. Nah, I don't even want to say what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't um, want to okay know. okay on to the backs now where we have more interesting choices i mean i think personally nine and ten combinations are pretty much kind of what everyone thought maybe one or two differences so at nine we have gareth davies ali price and connor murray and at 10 we have uh, Owen Farrell, Dan Bigger, and Finn Russell. So I think it was always going to be the case that one of, you know, Sexton, Russell, Bigger, Farrell would miss out. Uh, and it just so happens to be Sexton this time. And then I think it was one of the Welsh scrum halves would, would basically... Well, it, was ben, ben be out Connor Murray. it was either going to be Connor Murray and a couple of Welsh scrum halves, like Thomas Williams or someone who was on amazing form a couple of years ago. Uh, people were saying Hardy for Lions a couple of months back when he played really well against England. Um, so I just think it was nine was a bit of a lottery. Uh, but yeah, what do you I agree. Guys think of it? I'd say nine is a position where I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm not looking at it thinking this is the position we're going to win the game. You know what I mean? And like in terms of selection, I think you hit it nail on the head. The only other person I could see possibly going in there would be Thomas Williams. But I think the selection of the nines is good. In terms of tens, I think I don't know. I it it is what it is. I just feel really bad for Sexton because he's never going to play for the Lions again. And he's, he just I gets thought, too. He just get, He's just too fragile, especially against South Africa. He's just going to get killed in like the first first game. They'll just never. And he just won't play the rest at all. That is. Yeah. That is probably the truth, though. That's probably the reason why. Like he yeah. like he's arguably arguably been better than like Farrell and. And um, Russell recent, recently, but he's just too fragile. Yeah, I mean, the only one, I mean, if we see Farrell playing in the centres, the only person I can really see starting is Dan Bigger, because that guy is just a machine and he's, all, he's a warrior at 10. Like, unless Russell, as you say, absolutely tears it up and shows something insane, I just feel like they'll go for the stability of Bigger. Who and play Warren Ball, just high what? balls and ball. I, <laughs> Dan I just want to catch point the ball. out. One one thing that you can hundred percent see is the influence of Gregor Townsend in the squad, like just in decisions. Like Ali Price, like maybe he came, maybe he was the third choice, maybe because Ben Young's pulled out, maybe even maybe not. Who knows? But you like obviously Finn Russell, like that would have been quite a close one. But I reckon it that he probably got the the uh, he got in because there because of uh, thingy, and like just lo- loads of the Scottish players have got in where maybe you wouldn't have thought they had as much of a chance. And you can see that in the numbers. I think it's like, I think it was like 11 England players, 10 Welsh players, and then eight Irish and Scottish players, which usually Scotland only get like three players, I think was on the last course. Yeah, I, mean, which I think it's deserving. Two, two I, and four respectively. On, on I think the... it's deserving though, to be honest. Like if you look at the way they played in the Six Nations in particular, like winning big games and running like teams really, really close, they're as at, based on current form, they're as good as any other Six Nations team, essentially. So it's only right that they have the number of players that they have. And I think the majority of the players that they that are in, to me, aren't even like fringe players. Like they're just like showings, like at least five yeah. of them. Like it, yeah. They, they, they be just, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would I would agree. I like I don't think Ali Price is a bad shout at all. And then coming onto the centres. Um, you know, we've got Bundyaki, Chris Harris, Robbie Henshaw and Elliot Daly. Elliot Daly more in there as a rotational back, like, you know, can play anywhere in the back line apart from 10, essentially. Um, I think those centres yeah. are so random. Those centres are so yeah. random. Other than Henshaw, it's I don't, really I don't think. I think, look look at them. They're you love Chris Harris, but like, 
centers yeah. is where i have the biggest issue because i'm i just can't fathom why like aki he came out from a big injury i'm sure he played well for connacht he played for I, think, ireland. I think started I think a game for he's... ireland and got a red card what well, What's, what's I think here? I think he's a replacement for North. I think he I think because North North had that North was absolutely going to go hundred percent. But they're not going to play and Aki I at think they, as, like that. Yeah, like but they, they oh, I don't know I don't know, mate. They they probably just wanted to, I don't know his card one because who else would they put in instead? Like, uh, who, Manus, Chris Harris Manu maybe. Alangi? No, but no, yeah, yeah. But who mm. would have they? Who who did they replace? No, who would not. who would have been the replacement for North? For North, North, I just think North was 100% going. I think there was oh, no I think doubt. The replacement for North, I, I, I'm I, also tempted to think that the replacement for North is Elliot Daly, because given the fact that Elliot Daly also plays on a wing and can play centre, mm-hmm. which in a sense is relatively light to light, albeit they play in very different ways, but the rotational nature of them and the, the how flexible they are in terms of position, I think that could be it. But I, I'm just, Missing. I'm totally confused why, uh, I'm just confused why would, like ring for me, like Henshaw and Ringrose. Ringrose had a Slade point in Six Nations and Henry Slade. Are people? You guys, like, you guys missed there? one. 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 I think you missed one guy, uh, Jonathan Davies. Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't only, actually too only disappointed. Player of the tour on the last Lions tour. Only been on two Lions tours before. Played six. Four times. years ago, though, mate. outrageously well. Yeah, and he's been playing ago. at twelve for Wales, which is not his natural position. He's thirteen, and he's also huge. But at the same time, I think Bundyaki can do it. You know, I think he's a good. I think he's a good enough player to to step up. I think. I, I, I think, think Chris I, Harris. I, defensively, I, I spoke about Chris Harris in a previous episode, and I said to you guys, he would do. He wouldn't be a surprising pick for the Lions. And look at him now; he's absolutely smashed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's hundred percent one of Gregor, Gregor Townsend's influences because yeah. I just he is hundred percent not a, 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 a normal pick for anyone except Ed. But like, I think he is definitely not. He was he was on the fringes. He wouldn't have been in your squad, it. Ed, if you picked one. Uh, pro- probably not. But I just think <laughs> he's a line now. But then, but then he he is a line now, and and I'm not. <laughs> he's not someone like Mal says. He's not someone that you you're like too surprised to see in there necessarily. I still think he's a class player. He's you know one of the stalwarts of the Scottish back line at the moment. He literally slots in at 13 straight away. It must be one of the first games on the team sheet for them. And look at the form that they're in. So it's not necessarily a surprise that he's there. But yeah, I will admit, you know, Tulangi North, if he was fit, um, Ring Rose, probably have all of them over him. But at the same time, yeah. Chris Harris is a really good player. I'm not disappointed to see him there. I'm happy to see him there. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I agree. And Ed, on your point about Bundyaki, like I have, I have no like any player that's starting for the international team. Yeah, they can probably st- step up to the plate and do a job. You have to look at the alternatives. And to me, like clearly, like Farrell, he's clearly what we can take from this is he's planning on playing Farrell at twelve and not ten, most probably, which means that it's going to be a thirteen playing with him. Who I really hope is Robbie Henshaw, based on the form he's been in. Um, and wouldn't be surprised. So I don't know how, like, uh, similarly to what we were talking about, I think it was Porter or someone, uh, the amount of test match rugby Aki will be playing, I don't, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I'm unsure. And I, I just think I would rather have seen, like, I think Henry Slade, for example, adds more value to a squad than Bundy Aki does, like, as, as a player. I think just, it's just a quick a bit... comment as well on Elliot Daly, like, he's not very good. Um, but at the same, <laughs> but at the same, he time, adds value for Warren Ball. This is the point. At the Ball. same time, like he's been playing at fullback for too long. He's not a fullback. He is a center or a winger, and that's where he played in the Test match on the Lions tour last time. And he played so well, played a pivotal role in that amazing try the Lions scored, where he stepped outside the outside like Anton Leonard Brown. I absolutely gassed him, man. Yeah, that's what you got to give him. And if you play him at fullback, he just looks like a bit of a wet sponge yeah no. No, you, you heard it from you heard it here first i'm calling elliot daly to play 13 on tour and then he'll never play fullback again for england because like i think i even i know you guys will laugh i think he heard it here first heard it here first folks i actually think that's going to happen and you, you'll laugh because obviously championship is incredibly different but he's he played 13 against ealing a few weeks ago and it was destroyed. it was ridiculous like it, it he, elliot daly himself 
like aside from the rest of the team, obviously it was filled with internationals. But if that's anything to show whatsoever, and we know Ealing aren't a terrible side, they're a very, very good side. He was electric, like nothing I've seen when he plays 15. So I'll be really looking forward to see him play 13. Hopefully he gets some kind of test match time. Um, and also his boot is perfect for Warren Ball. Because Warren Ball, he'll try and get penalties within 60. And then we'll just keep popping them over probably. Um, and this so... is another thing that I think it'll be interesting to see after this Lions tour, how it relates back to the whole England setup. So like if someone does play particularly well in the position that they don't usually play for England. So if Farrell, for example, plays 10 on tour, suddenly tears it up again. If Simmons plays um, outrageous and he gets still left out, we might as well just kill Ed Jones. <laughs> well, yeah. I think Sam Simmons can be seeing this as a real opportunity to like actually prove himself at an international level. Like imagine how gassed you are because Sam Simmons right now. Like yeah. he's, probably putting two, he's probably putting two up at Eddie Jones. And just like... mate, he was, mate. But I think we forget he was European Player of the Year last year. So he technically, if you're based on that, he was number one on that team sheet for the Lions based on his performance last season. Technically, and he's the yeah. number one try scorer in the Premiership, and he's a number eight. What the hell? That's actually just like stupid. Yeah. All right. Let's get on to the actual <laughs> try scorers now. I think rather than gassing about Sam Simmons, so we all knew he was going to be in the Lions squad anyway. Let's face it. We uh, did not. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, moving swiftly on then to uh, the back three in the backs. We have Josh Adams, Stuart Hogg, Shuin, Lewis Reese Zamet, Duhan Van der Moer, Anthony Watson, and Liam Williams. Mate. Perfect, no except planet. Josh Adams. I think that's actually perfect, except Josh Adams. Yeah, I agree with Johnny that. May for me. Johnny May. Josh Adams as yeah, but Josh if if Josh Adams plays well, then you know I'm not really going to. I'm not going to. The thing is, you don't you don't need a Johnny May because you have Murray Samet, who's technically a a better, faster version of Johnny May at the moment. Johnny May is more experienced, though. I but but you don't need experience with when you have Watson, Liam Williams. Who let's be honest, the starting Mm -hmm. it's going to be Watson, Liam Williams, and then whoever is the best form out of the others. Yeah. Which I think will be Zamet, to be honest. Um, or Duhan. Or Liam Williams. No, because Duhan. No, Liam. Remember. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You've got Stuart Hogg as well at 15, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I, th- I, I think Liam Williams, depending on depending on how boring he wants to play, I could see Liam Williams starting the first test um, and on the wing Me. as a defensive winger. Um, and some serious high balls will be going up into the air by Farrell and bigger. And Liam Williams will be chasing them down. I can guarantee yeah, that will happen. Strong looking back three, seriously yeah. strong looking. Like uh, 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 there's not really much weakness. Like it. Like imagine in the warm up games having like Duhan and Lewis Rees Zamet, and then at either Liam Williams or Stuart Hogg because you can't call which one of them is going to start the test match because they're both really really good players. Oh, Hogg's Hogg's starting the test match. Well, you know, you never know, really, do you? I think, I think if Liam Williams starts outrageous. a test match, I think if Liam Williams starts a test match, he'll start it on the wing. Mate, Mate the mid, the midweek back three is going to actually be stupid. Um, do Han Van der Merle, Louis Sammet, and then just like literally just get out of the wings and we'll literally kill them. Literally, yeah. they'll be dead. Um, uh, I'm excited. I think the back three and the back <laughs> row for me are the two most exciting areas for the Lions. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to see whether Luri Samet or Van der Merwe can break into that starting Test 15, um, and to see whether they can tear it up. Because we know, I think those two. This is the first time I think on a Lions tour or really like going into any kind of international thing where I've been properly excited to see like some players play. Um, and it's like, and for me, out of these guys, is Sam Simmons, Luri Samet. And Van der Merwe, Louis is going to be wearing a lion shirt. That's kind of crazy. Um, Mate, he's literally 20. What the hell? Mate, a yeah. year ago, no one knew about it. A year ago, no one knew except like anyone who kind of watched the Premiership. And even then, he wasn't like a big name. And now he is a Lions player. What the hell? Are you crazy? Yeah, I guess the more we talk about it, the more gassed I am about it. The only positions where I'm like, meh, is the centres. 
and I'm just not like massively excited about it. Like mate, when I got Henshaw. Mate, Henshaw, Henshaw, yeah. He is excited. He's probably one of the most exciting players. Yeah. I I I kind of wanted to lang in there to be honest. Like I was hoping he could they put him in as a bolter, but well, there you have it, guys. The Lions squad for 2021 against South Africa wrapped up in a short video for you. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll provide you with lots more rugby content in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. Rugby.